We lost the race yesterday. We should have won. Let's have a hard talk about that. But we have good news tonight. We have Scott Pressler tonight talking about talking to us about blocking and tackling. We have culture war stuff. We have a light in the mood. We have all that coming up on I'm Right. We get the government we deserve. No, I, I need to clarify. Not each and every individual. I have no doubt you are the hyper-informed, tip-of-the-spear political person in your sphere of life. You're watching, I'm right. I, I, I'm not worried about you. As a people, overall, we get the government we deserve. We had an election yesterday in Jacksonville, Florida. We had a Republican mayor in Jacksonville, Florida. Did you know that? It's in Duval County, a county Ron DeSantis won. Did you know we lost that election? Now, it's a D plus four county. I don't want to act like it's blood red, but we lost that election yesterday. If you look at the turnout, it's pitiful. And I know it's not a sexy election, right? It's not for Senator. It's not Trump or DeSantis. We don't see them on Fox News. Nobody's name is in lights. Why don't we care enough to show up on critical local elections? You know what determined your quality of life during COVID when this country lost its mind? It wasn't the federal government. It was the state you lived in. I live in Texas. I lived, my kids lived a radically different life for two years than the people in New York lived. I went and visited New York several times for work. It was like I went to a different planet. Local is what we need. And we can't bring ourselves to care enough to show up. We don't show up for primaries. When we do show up for primaries, we vote for the same loser rhino that's in there. We don't show up for local elections and try to get someone out for a city council or a school board race. They scoff and blow it off and, sorry, I'm watching the game. I don't want to hear about your MAGA bumper sticker or your Ron DeSantis t-shirt if you don't care enough to show up for local elections. Blocking and tackling is how we will take back this nation. We will not take back this nation from Washington, D.C. We will start local, take back our communities, and expand from there. That's how we will save this country, all right? Joining me now, somebody trying to actually save the country, someone who understands that blocking and tackling, not the sexy things, or what actually wins election, is my buddy conservative activist and national spokesman for the Early Vote Action Pack, Scott Pressler once again joining us. Scott, okay, uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville's not a Republican place. It's D plus four, if I remember right. It's D plus four, but still, we just lost Jacksonville yesterday, and our turnout was pathetic. I know it's not sexy, it's not Trump, and it's not DeSantis, and it's not a presidential election, but it's one of the last major cities where we had any power at all, and we just just filtered it away and didn't even show up to vote. Why, do, why are we like this? Well, it's a variety of things. I actually think voter registration is very sexy, Jesse. But look, we had a... <laughs> We had a county, Jacksonville. I'm actually from Duval County. I was born in Neptune Beach. And it's sad to see that despite Republicans actually getting more registered voters by party to vote in the election, ultimately we lost independent voters. And we had more independents vote for the opponent than we were able to get Republicans to vote for our candidate. And in part, it was a very bitter primary and we had a lot of money that was spent against our ultimate nominee. And so it just shows you, y'all, it doesn't matter if it's Florida or South Dakota or Tennessee, we have to fight for every single election. And apathy is gonna be our major hurdle going into the 2024 election. We have to treat every election as serious. Scott, why do we have this apathy? You're on the ground all the time. You're registering voters by the dozen. You can't look. Every Republican complains. Everyone. I'm around normal Republicans, not activists, and all they do is complain when I'm around them. Biden sucks. The border's open. Crime sucks. This sucks. That sucks. And then I tell them, hey, we got a city council election. No response. No one shows up. How do we not make that connection? You know, Jesse, I don't know how to answer that. I am working my tail off as a volunteer. I'm not even getting paid through my organization right now that I created. I wanna oh, make that very gosh. clear. This is a volunteer. And when people say to me, Scott, you know, the election is rigged or why should I do something? You know, it's hard for me, I have to bite my tongue, but I respond back to them and say, many hands make light work. 
or I encourage others to take action. The only way that I know how to lead is lead by example. And so what people can expect from Scott Pressler, from me moving forward, is I'm going to keep my head down. I'm going to register as many voters as I can as Republicans. I'm going to focus on early voting and an all of the above approach to voting. And I'm going to focus on legal and lawful ballot harvesting. In the state of Oregon, I've been working with pastors to set up unofficial drop boxes, which is legal in the state of Oregon, and it's already produced results. We had members of the congregation of the parish turn in ballots to the unofficial drop box, and then the pastor then took those ballots to the local elections office before the election on Tuesday, May 16th. So part of this is just informing the public of what we're able to do and encouraging and motivating them to do it. But y'all, if you were serious about making Joe Biden a one-term president, if you were serious about saving our country, my direct messages are open. Send me a message at Scott Pressler on Twitter. I would love to work with you to make sure that Joe Biden is a one-term president. Gosh, I love that. Blocking and tackling. I love that. Tell me about Pennsylvania, Scott. I know you're spending a lot of time in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is critical if you want to win back the presidency. And we've clearly taken a beating there by... The fact they have a broccoli, a head of broccoli as their senator now. Are we making headway there? We're making progress. You know, in 2012 with President Obama, in November of 2012, the Democrats had an advantage of 1.1 million more Democrats registered than Republicans. Now, today in 2023, the Democrats only have an advantage of, we'll say, 467,000 more Ds than ours. So we've made a lot of progress at bringing down that Democratic advantage. Now, I'm currently at the Republican Committee of Allegheny County headquarters right at 100 Fleet Street in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Y'all, we need your help here in Southwest PA. During this trip, I'm doing four events in four days. I'm doing Allegheny, Westmoreland, Armstrong, and Beaver. And to give you an example, Beaver County, which is a Trump county that at the same time that it voted for Dr. Oz, voted for Democratic Governor Shapiro is a county that's only 1,000 voter registrations away from flipping from Democrat to Republican. And it's my contention that with a little bit of sweat equity, a little bit of elbow grease, I believe in the next five years we could make Southwest Pennsylvania a ruby red Republican. And so to anybody in this area, please join Sam DeMarco, the chairman, join the Republican Committee of Allegheny County, and I need your help to bring down those voter registration numbers to make sure Pennsylvania helps elect a Republican president in 2024. Golly, that is great news. Okay, the, the, the chasing down ballots, Scott, you've been all over this, and I love that. The GOP is, well, pathetic like they always are at actually trying to handle this problem, but you're working on it. Are we making headway there? Are we going to have a ballot track down operation that's even decent heading into the 2024 election? Well, it's a little difficult to answer because I feel like right now, uh, much of that work is resting on my shoulders and I can only do oh, so much gosh. as one. So I would, I would love some help. And again, you can go to earlyvoteaction.com. But look, I am working with county parties, like I just said. Chairman Sam DeMarco, this is the second largest county outside of Philly in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and I've offered my help, and he's listening to the grassroots. So there are chairmen and chairwomen that are working together, but it's going to take a lot of education, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful manner, but what I mean is, when I went to Northwest Wisconsin, where they had two feet of snow on the ground going into election day, they told me, Scott, no one has offered this compelling message talking about early voting, mail-in voting, and the value of an all-of-the-above approach to voting. And so if we're going to be successful, a lot of it is talking to our voters. For example, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, you're voting by mail, but you can go to your county elections office early and do in person a vote by mail. So if you don't trust drop boxes or if you don't trust the United States Postal Service, but you wanna vote early, there are ways and avenues that we can do so. And then y'all, you won't get a knock at your door. You won't get another text message. You won't get another email. You're gonna be taken off the list so we can focus on low propensity voters and focus on the people that we need in order to win elections. Oh, I love that. Okay. I I'm, I'm, I don't even want to ask the question, Scott, because I already know the answer, but I have to ask. I know you've been reaching out to the RNC. 
I know you've been extending a hand. You want them to reach out to young people. You want them to do things. Just please tell me you've gotten some kind of a response. Yes, no, not interested. Go screw yourself. Have they, have they even responded at all? Well, I have been tweeting respectfully and in a classy manner to Chairwoman McDaniel for 33 days on social media. And I do know that at the last RNC meeting they had weeks ago, that my name was brought up in front of every sitting member that was there to the chairwoman. And so the RNC is aware that I'm reaching out to them. And I want to make it clear, look, I'm a collaborator. I'm a team player. This has nothing to do with ego. This isn't the Scott Pressler show. I want to win. And I have 1.3 million people that follow me on social media that trust me and that need a little bit of direction and delegation. My door, my uh, phone call is always open and I'm willing to work together with the RNC should they ever give me a phone call. Yeah, well, Scott's a lot nicer guy than I am and now I'm officially angry and involved. So RNC is going to be hearing from me as well. Scott Pressler, thank you, brother. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, now I'm upset. Um, I'm gonna talk about the culture war. There's a lot out there with that right now. Let's talk about something good first. Forget all that. Let's talk about something that makes us smile. Our dogs. You know, even for a mean person like me, there's something about coming home and having that big fluffy idiot Fred come and just bombard you at the door. Like it's the greatest moment of his life. And look, we love him. Why don't we take care of him? And I know you love your dog. I love my dog. But the truth is we, we don't give them the nutrition they need because we didn't know. You don't know that dog food is nutritionless. That's why it's all brown. They, they look into it. You don't have to take my word for it. They kill everything in dog food so it lasts longer on the shelf. Your dog's just eating empty calories. It's like you eating a double cheeseburger from McDonald's every meal. Doesn't mean you have to starve your dog. Keep giving in the dog food. Pour rough greens on there. All natural herbal supplement. Digestive enzymes, vitamins, minerals, omega oils. Watch your dog change. Watch your dog give you years of life you wouldn't have gotten without Rough Greens. I love this stuff, man. Free jumpstart trial bags right now for whoever goes to roughgreens.com slash jesse or whoever calls 833-33-MY-DOG. We'll be back. Talk about some culture war stuff. Good news. Very good news out there. Good stuff. What's good? Doesn't seem good, right? Everything around us is going to crap, but let me tell you, something is happening out there. The right is beginning to wake up and realize something critical. Every day is election day. We just talked about elections and local elections and how we're failing at this and failing at that. Okay, we get that. We're not showing up in enough primaries, not showing up in enough local elections. But we are showing up in the crucial election that happens every day. Every day is now election day in America. Now that corporations have decided to de declare war on you and your values, you vote every single day with where you spend and don't spend your money. For instance, Target. You shop at Target? But they, 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 hold on, I wanna be clear, I'm not judging. I've shopped at Target. When we first got married, we went, and got our, we went and got our wedding furniture, our furniture for our first house at Target. $150 for a dresser that fell apart, of course, in about 30 seconds. But I've done plenty of shopping at Target, so I'm not judging you. But do you still shop at Target? Do you intend to continue shopping at Target? If that answer to that question is yes, Jesse, of course I'm going to shop at Target. Great prices. I got one right by the house. Okay, all right. Just remember, if you keep shopping at Target, this is what you're funding. This is cool. Queen, queen, queen. <laughs> Queens take care of each other. Mom says I'm supposed to be more organized. Can I work on this for my reading log? Perfect for our beach vacation. Dad, can we pull out your CD player? Fit for anyone and everyone? Let's get this for mom. Live, laugh, Lebanese. <laughs> Trains and people will always exist. That's not what it says. 
obviously it's a funny video, but is that what you vote for? We gotta have this talk. And again, I, I'm not coming from a position of judgment. It's very hard when you're surrounded by all this filth to not fund some of it. I still do. I'm sure I still do. I'm trying to be better. But do you want to vote for that? If you go buy that toilet paper you need at Target, that's you voting for that. But I said there is good news, and there is. You remember the whole Bud Light fiasco? My buddy Tommy Lauren, she... You came out with this yesterday. A current Bud Light employee reached out to me to tell me things are bad and mass layoffs are expected. Production is stalled. They can't give the stuff away. My buddy Clay Travis did a little experiment. You know, he's a college football guy. And so they set out a bunch of coolers of free beer. Okay, free beer on college campuses. Free beer. College campuses. Take a look at this. It's 645. Experiment here. There appear to be three different types of beer in this cooler. Franklin, Tennessee. Yingling. Ultra. And Bun Light. 645. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to come back and record this at 945 and show you what's left. All right, it's now. 15. I'm not a marketing expert, but the only beer left at the West Fest VIP, whatever you want to call it, event, Bud Light. A cooler full of free beer sitting there. College. Why? Because you finally engaged in the culture war. You spread the word. You put your money where your morals are. When every, and by the way, the DC swamp class all told you to back off, right? They wanted you to back off. Hey, back off, uh, Bud Light's not bad. Hey, uh, we should back off, guys. But you said, no, no, I'm not going to back off. Now, we've taken an iconic American brand and we le left it dying like a carcass on the side of the road because they declared war on your values and my values, and we chose to put our money where our morals are, and now they are in pain. Now, other brands will start accounting for us. It looks like Miller Lite needs to be next. Here's a little known fact. Women were among the very first to brew beer ever. From Mesopotamia to the Middle Ages to colonial America, women were the ones doing the brewing. Centuries later, how did the industry pay homage to the founding mothers of beer? They put us in bikinis. Wow. Look at this shit. Wild. It's time beer made it up to women. So today, Miller Lite is on a mission to clean up not just their shit, but the whole beer industry's shit. Miller Lite has been scouring the internet for all this shit and buying it back so that they can turn it into good shit for women brewers. Literally, good shit. How you ask? Ladies, take it away. First, we turn the bad shit into compost. Then we feed compost to worms. Push it out beautiful fertilizer. That good shit helps farmers grow quality hops, which is then donated to women brewers to make their own really good shit. Much more appealing than those women in bikinis, no? Now, it should be noted that ad came out before the Bud Light ad. It's an old thing that resurfaced. But again, it shows you corporate America has such disdain for you. And how do they keep making these mistakes? Why is it that you and I have to make an example of these corporations? We shouldn't have to. It should just be like it was when I was a kid. I'm not even that old. I'm 41 and none of this stuff existed. Why does it exist now? It exists now for many reasons, but one of the main culprits is corporate America They have such an old way of thinking. They think you should just hire this lady or this dude because he went to Harvard and he went to Stanford or he went to the Chicago School of Business. Wow, look at his resume. And they don't understand they're bringing communist activists into their company. Why would Miller Lite be stupid enough to once again spit in the face of their very heterosexual male customer base? Why would they do that? Because you hired a nutball named Ilana Glazer. Here's her in 2019. 
you guys made a little bit of political comedy news in the last couple of days yeah. because what you're doing something special this season <sighs> with uh well with our, with our president what is it yes we are bleeping his last name president bleep um he gets enough airtime as it is and you know it's in in the world it would be better not to hear it no it's going to make it sound <laughs> You could actually say anything you you could say anything you want in that moment. You and, right. and people would know what you were saying. You could say you're saying Trump, but you could say anything you want right. in that moment. That's true. Yeah. Why would a major corporation bring a communist activist inside their doors? I don't know, but these corporations better grow up and wake up, or they're in trouble. Oh, don't think it's just Miller Lite. You a gun guy or a gun lady? You'd probably like HKs, right? Who doesn't? Nice quality firearms. Well, apparently they're going to go down the same road. They're all over the internet now, defending the Miller Lite stuff. Quote, wow, woke? Allow me to translate. Objectifying women was never a good marketing strategy. In the firearms industry, that was a prominent strategy up until recently. As an actual woman typing this, I'll use more words for you to comprehend. Using bunnies to sell products is trash marketing. They have since deleted the tweet, you should know. I'm sure there's a big meeting today at HK. How does this happen? How, how, do, how do we allow this to happen? Well, you don't need a big meeting. Hey, HK, just get a hold of my producer, Matt. He'll give you my cell number. If you want to know how this stuff happens, I'll be happy to sit down and talk to you. It's because you keep hiring communists. You think you're in 1980, where you can just hire anybody you want. If you're a business, large or small, you should be combing through the social media accounts of every single person you even consider hiring. And if you even sniff any whiff of Democrat on them, they should be eliminated immediately. If you don't, you get what you get. Don't throw a fit. All right, we're not done. We still have a lot of show for you. Before we get to that, speaking of guns, let's talk about keeping you out of prison. Now, this is an age where you should carry a weapon. If you don't know how, you're not familiar with weapons, get familiar with them. Tons of classes available and start carrying a weapon legally, where you can do it legally. But part of that is making sure if, God forbid, something happens, you have legal representation. And this is normally where you buy insurance. I've done it in the past. You buy insurance for something. Ah, oh, I got the insurance, so I, 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 my attorney's covered if I get in a shooting. Ah, here's the problem with that. These insurance things, they can drop you if they determine, ah, I'm not sure if it was self-defense. Boom, they'll drop you. They'll make you reimburse them. You're not covered. That's not an attorney. Attorneys for freedom, that's an attorney. That's you having an, a attorney on retainer, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is necessary. If you carry a weapon, carry Attorneys for Freedom with you. Go to attorneysforfreedom.com slash jesse. That saves you 25 bucks on your sign up. Do it, all right? Protect yourself. We'll be back. Get us, uh, gaslight us up here as if Antifa, which Mr. Rosas, apparently the expert now in organized terrorist activity, has overruled the FBI director, who says, there's a headline, says Antifa is an ideology, not an organization. No, no, no. Let's not listen to the FBI director. Let's listen to, sorry, what's your, your title? Senior writer at Town Hall, who is going to tell us that the FBI director is wrong. I think it's funny to be to be lectured by an heir to the Levi Strauss uh, Corporation. And, and that, honestly, that's probably why he uh, doesn't consider property damage to be that big of a deal, because not only does he have that, but he also has uh, what some would describe an impossibly good stock portfolio. Gosh, that's so savage. Joining me now, my buddy Julio Rosas. He is the one who wrote the book. On Antifa, on top of being a town hall guy, author of the book Fiery but Mostly Peaceful. Julio, look, before we get into all the Antifa stuff and the border stuff, I just have to say, my man, you did us proud yesterday. Well done. No, no, thank you. I appreciate that. It, 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 it certainly was uh, a crazy moment. And, and the only thing that I kind of wish went down because 
my response was was given time by Representative Eli Crane. Shout out to him. Uh, and so by that time, Goldman had left the room for for you know for whatever reason. And it it and look because you know if you're going to come after me and my credibility um, that has you know when it, when it comes to this topic is unmatched, but in in many ways and, and honest, uh, I'm proud to say. Um, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to hit back at you, and you know, nothing I said was inaccurate. Uh, I just have I just have questions about the guy who represents Wall Street and has very good stock portfolio. Mm. Well, no, those are very valid questions. And by the way, we're going to talk to Eli Crane next on this show. I love me some Eli Crane. All right, now set all that stuff aside. Uh, Antifa. People see the black masks, they see little clips on this show and others about the things they do, but that's very different than actually being on the ground with them, with them surrounding you. Who are these people, Julio? What do they want? They, they it, it kind of depends um, because it is a loose coalition of um, the, the, the general unifying uh, ideas is that they want to have this anarcho-communist type uh, government, so to speak. I mean, they're very anti-government. They're, they're the far left anti-government version. Uh, and so that's why they hate, obviously, Republicans, but they also hate Democrats too, because they think they're one and the same. Uh, but they, in terms of who they are, I mean, they, uh, you think about where they're the strongest in, in terms of their presence. You think the Pacific Northwest, uh, New York City, Washington DC, Los Angeles, many of those places are overwhelmingly white right or you have very large white population and when you look at the mugshots of those who actually were able to be arrested you, and you find out more about their background a lot of them not all of them but a lot of them come from upper middle class sometimes very wealthy families and at the riot in uh atlanta uh that was one of the basis for having this hearing on far left violence in the first place uh, two of them weren't even from the country they were they were, they were from canada and france and so they're they're die hard Revolutionaries. I mean, they are they are the straight up communists that you always talk about. Um, they're they're the ground troops to the, kind of the political communists that that you're always uh, uh, warning us about. Okay, so they're spoiled rich kids because I think a lot of these people who don't understand them the way you do would look and just assume they're society's losers, just a bunch of you know maybe homeless or something like that. But no, they're the children of privilege. A lot of them are, uh, and don't get me wrong, a, a lot of them are also kind of the, the downtrodden. That's why they kind of believe in, you know, taking down the, 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 the capitalist, uh, or, or systemically racist country uh, of, of, you know, of the United States. But, but that, that's kind of one of the surprising things. And I think part of it is that they, the, the rich ones view themselves as like, oh, well, we're, we're not like our parents. We're not like the previous generations. We're the ones that are going to make the change. And you know, it's it's kind of the whole white guilt thing too that that gets them to go do do these very crazy outlandish things, and so it, it's again I, I find it very interesting that this is the really the the, the culmination of kind of all of the things when we talk about CRT and and, and wokeness. I mean, it, there's there's obviously different levels to that, and when you, as someone who's come from a place of privilege, uh, think that the solution to that is to uh, destroy a small business owned by a minority in the name of in the name of anti-racism. I mean, uh, you've kind of lost the plot at that point. Yeah, just a little bit. All right, let's actually shift gears to the border. Even though Joe Biden kind of thinks it's funny and has no plans to go down, here he was. Okay. How do you think things are going at the border, sir? Much better than much, much better than you all expected. <laughs> do you have any plans to visit no, the border? No, I think. Pardon me. Do you have any plans to visit the border? Not in the near term, no. No, it'd just be disruptive, not anything else. Julio, you just got back from the border. Is it a laughing matter down there? No, no, it's not. And I would say that the reason why, especially in Texas, the reason why we didn't see that massive surge of illegal immigrants coming once Title 42 expired is because, and you see in the video being played right now, uh, the, the Texas National Guard and Highway Patrol, under the orders of Governor Abbott, they were sent to the hotspot locations that people were crossing in the recent weeks, and they were denying them entry. So word was coming back to the people that were still in Mexico that they weren't able to cross at those areas. And so, um, you know, 
that doesn't mean that the migrants went home. They're still in Mexico. Um, even when we were in, when I was in El Paso, I had a photographer, a buddy of mine, who rode the train that heads north into Juarez. And he was on the train with all these other migrants that were still coming. I mean, so they're still in Mexico. They're still trying, they're, they're just trying to figure out what to do next. The, the cartels are trying to figure out this new post Title 42 era. And so I think we're going to have to wait a couple of weeks for it to kind of uh, evolve and and I mean we've already seen in Arizona the the Tucson sector chief uh, just I think it was yesterday or the day before he he tweeted out pictures of a group of 200 people who had illegally crossed so I mean there there are still big groups coming and and the, there are still thousands of people waiting in Mexico but um, I know Greg Abbott you know he he gets a lot of criticism when it comes to this stuff but but I can tell you being there on the ground in El Paso and and Juarez um, it's because of Operation Lone Star that that's why we didn't see that massive surge. Now, it depends on how long you can keep that up and it depends on when they can redeploy to new hotspots. Um, but that, that was the that was the that one of the reasons why we didn't see uh, kind of the predictions come to fruition. Julio, well, something I've found to be interesting, I'm sure you'll, you've enjoyed this as well, is these Democrat cities, these sanctuary cities who have long been compassionate to the illegal immigrant, they're all of a sudden, well, here they are on camera. Yeah, Where the heck job. is the President of the United States? Uh, that, that is a good question. We already have over 61,000, over 40,000 houses in New York City. They're bursting at the seams, and Mayor Adams is doing the very best he can in a difficult situation. So how is your city coping with this? We're at the breaking point, particularly with regards to resources in terms of capacity and space, as well as money. <clears throat> We've expended close to $17 million uh, since the end of the year uh, on helping our migrants. Julio, what? I don't understand what happened to the compassion. Are they not compassionate anymore? I mean, that's just a drop in the bucket compared to what all these border towns in Texas and Arizona have had to deal with. I mean, I just have a... Uh, a source in uh, and uh, within the border patrol at, at, in Yuma, Arizona, and he t he told me that they're dropping a thousand people a day at the local NGO, and, and so uh, sixty one thousand, yeah, that's a lot of people, but that's nothing in compared to what these border towns have been dealing with for for since two thousand twenty one. I mean, geez, this has been going on for for a long time now, and so. I, it, it's not a political stunt. I, I, I've said this before. This, it's not a political stunt to to relieve the pressure off of these border towns to send them to these sanctuary cities. It's no, you guys are the ones that have said you want them. We've got more than we can handle. So here, take some because one, they, they want to go. The, the migrants they want to go to those cities. That's why that's why they're sending. It's not like anyone's being sent against their will. Um, and I understand people say, well, we shouldn't. Be sending them further within the country, they should be sent back. And the, the unfortunate fact is, is that at the, at the state level or the city level, they can't do that. I mean, this this is the problem when you have a federal government that's not willing to actually enforce uh, um, immigration law. So the, 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 the sad reality is that the you know Abbott or, or you know obviously Katie Hobbs wouldn't do it, but you know Doug Ducey, he he they wouldn't be able to to send them back. I mean, because I mean that would have caused a whole bunch of problems. And so the only solution. Uh, for them is to just send them away to the places that they want to go to because the, the, these, these towns are way smaller, do not have the money or the capacity compared to places like Chicago, New York City, uh, Washington, D.C. Julio Rosas, I appreciate you, man. Semper Fi. Come back soon, brother. Semper Fi. Thanks. We'll talk to e Navy SEAL and Congressman Eli Crane next. Before we do that, let's... Uh, Let's talk about my buddy, Michael Berry. Now, he's my mentor. He's the reason I'm on TV. He's the reason I do radio. I was selling RVs before this about five years ago. And you know, Michael Berry has lost a ton of weight in the past few years. You know what Michael Berry has done to lose all that weight? Pickleball. He's about 51, 52 years old. He says he plays pickleball every single day. Kind of like a lower impact tennis or a larger impact table tennis is the way he tries to describe it to me. It's a freaking blast. It's great exercise. And oh, guess what? My buddies at Grip6 on top of making the greatest wallets ever that lock in your cards. I love it so much. Greatest belts. They also have pickleball paddles now. 
Grip 6, made in America. You know it's going to be quality because everything Grip 6 does is quality. Pickleball paddles. Let's get some exercise. Some made in America exercise. Grip6.com slash Jesse gets you a discount too. Go do it, all right? We'll be back. Um, that, that looked like a uniformed soldier opening up a gate for illegals at the border. Let's talk to Eli Crane about that. We normally don't have Navy personnel on before the month of June, but here he is, Republican congressman from the great state of Arizona, and of course, Navy SEAL Eli Crane. Eli, uh, do we have military personnel allowing the invasion of our country now? It's tough to say. You know, Jesse, thanks for having me on, brother. I think, uh, you know, anything's possible at this point. Um, I never thought I'd see the day uh, where we had leaders and officials in this country, um, you know, allowing the wholesale invasion of the United States. But here we are. And uh, it's interesting, Jesse, because I sit on the Homeland Security Committee, um, talk, you know, back and forth with the Democrats all the time. And unless, uh, unless you're talking about white supremacy, um, they don't really seem to care about what's going on at the border. So unless this, unless white supremacy is pushing these these folks over the border, unless they're white white supremacists, they really don't seem to care about it. And it's uh, it's sad, man, because uh, it it just it, they seem so transfixed on that one issue that um, they're unwilling to do anything about the southern border. What's the Secure Border Act, by the way? The Secure Border Act that we just passed? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, it, the number one thing it does, Jesse, is it finishes the border wall, adds 22,000 Border Patrol agents, um, some of the rest of the infrastructure needed uh, for border security, because as you know, Jesse, being a former Marine, uh, security is not one, it's not one thing. It's overlapping deterrence. Um, that's what this that's what this bill does. It supports local law enforcement uh, as well. And uh, you know, according to some of the uh, more senior members of the House of Representatives and the Freedom Caucus, they tell me that this is the most um, this is the best border bill they've ever seen come through the House. And so I'm glad that we were able to pass it. We'll see what the Senate does. And uh, yeah, man, I mean. These are crazy times we live in. Uh, speaking of crazy times, I have been kind of impressed with Kevin McCarthy so far. He was Kevin McCarthy. Well, here's what he said. I was very clear with Secretary Mayorkas months ago, even before this Congress took over, that I think he had failed at his job. I think every American, when they look at when Mayorkas goes on television, tells them the border is secure and why you have in the camera frame thousands of people just walking into America, nobody believes that. I bet if you hook Mayorkas up to a lie detector test, he could not pass a lie detector saying, saying the border is secure. I think America has a lot of questions, and I think he should have to come before the committee and answer all Americans about this. Eli, are we getting close to an impeachment on this Mayorkas guy? Guys I talk to say this is the one. That his head's probably on the chopping block. It better be, Jesse. Um, you know, I uh, sponsor articles of impeachment that Annie Biggs uh, launched, you know, I, probably a couple months ago uh, because even back then we knew um, that he, you know, wasn't doing his job, complete dereliction of duty. Um, but that's one of the most frustrating things up here in this town, man. You'll have Republicans who... You know, think it's political or theater, and I'm just thinking to myself, we need some accountability. This guy is not only not doing his job, but there, there's blood on his hands, and so we have to get rid of him. We have to hold him accountable. There can't be one standard for the American people and a completely different standard for this administration. Uh, okay, you brought up white supremacy earlier. I'm very yeah. curious. You you sit down with these people. 
Do you think they genuinely believe there's some white supremacy problem out there? Eli, I don't think I've ever met one. I'm 41 years old. It's something that doesn't really exist in any organized form anymore in this country, thank God. But these people, do they really believe it or do they just lie and that's just who they are? Yeah, so one of the things that my colleagues do is they they quote, you know, a paper put out by the DOJ under Christopher Ray saying that, you know, white supremacy and MAGA extremism was the biggest threat facing this country, the biggest homeland security threat facing this country. Now, first of all, I would love to see what data they were looking at. But the second part is, is that this FBI and this DOJ has largely been discredited and proven to be completely partisan and no longer investigating crime, but investigating individuals trying to find crime. Do you think we're getting closer to any kind of actual action taken by Congress against the FBI? I, I understand the hearings are necessary, but it can't stop there. Is it going to stop with hearings again? Well, Jesse, I, I'd be lying if I told you I had a crystal ball and knew what the future was going to be. Um, part of the, you know, part of the frustrating thing up here is that, you know, we can hold hearings, we can expose a lot up here, but if the DOJ, you know, Congress, it, we're, we're not allowed to throw anybody in jail. So, um, you know, it's it's as frustrating for us as it is for the American people. Um, I can't tell you what's going to happen. I just know that we got to keep hammering these people. Um, and for all of you listening out there to the great Jesse Kelly show, um, if you have a more moderate Republican representative, uh, please reach out to them. Tell them that, you know, you want to support our efforts to impeach Secretary Mayorkas and others. Um, we need to use the fact that a lot of these individuals up here are like wind socks and they only, um, mm. you know, they only go the direction the wind is blowing. And so we need you to help us to make those impeachment winds blow. Eli, appreciate you, man. I'll talk soon. Thanks, Jesse. Go Navy. All right. No, <laughs> that piece of trash. <laughs> All right, quit. We're going to go to lighten the mood. Something about talking to a Navy guy. I know he's a Navy SEAL, but something about talking to a Navy guy makes me feel like my T levels have dropped. So that's why I take a male vitality stack from Chalk. All natural herbal supplements. And so what it does is 20% increase in your testosterone in just 90 days. So if you're out and about and you run into any Navy guys, it'll counteract that T-level drop. CHOQ.com, promo code JESSE is what gets you 35% off subscriptions. Consider this the Navy special. Chalk.com, promo code JESSE. All right? We'll be back. All right. Time to lighten the mood. <laughs> Stop. It, you know how much we love Randy Weingarten, head of the teachers union on the show. So we've got something to show you here in just a second. Before we get to that, let's just do this really quickly here. Did you know if you bought precious metals back when I first started telling you about Oxford Gold, do you have any idea how much more you'd be worth right now? It would pretty much cancel out inflation. These, these are scary economic times. I had a financial whiz on my radio show last night. And you know what his advice was? This is one of those mega hedge fund guys. He said, buy precious metals. Now, a lot of them. Gold and silver delivered to your front door. Gold and silver in your 401k and IRA. And what I like most about Oxford Gold is they make it easy. It's not some used car sales pitch. They really just make it easy, which I needed them to do because I don't understand that stuff. How do I get gold and silver in my 401k? They handle it all. Call 833-995-GOLD. Tell them Jesse told you to call. They'll make it easy, all right? 833-995-GOLD. Which brings me to Communist John Denver. I don't understand why Communist John Denver thinks she's a public speaker, but man, she is, uh, she's not. What's happened is that we have been so siloed for so long and 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 what's happening now is that we're being you know we're vitiating those silos we're we're taking them down 
we're actually being together in this big, big field of dreams, of, of, of a new economy and a vision, you know, and all sorts of, whether you call it CHIPS or the Inflation Reduction Act, but all sorts of things that are out there that says to employers, that says to communities, that says about climate and the new things that could happen and be made in America, that, that there is, to build it, we need to also build and invest in the young people and also the not so young people who are going to be, who want these jobs of today and tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow.